What's up everyone, Dablade here with a patch information video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This is for patch 12.01 for PlayStation 4, otherwise known as 12.0.0.1 for Xbox One. This also covers patch 12.00 or 12.0.0.0 for Xbox, but Capcom have just upgraded the patch to its current versions to include a few more additional changes. Anyway, this patch has been made available on Thursday, December the 5th, and is around the 2.1 gigabyte mark for PlayStation 4 and 2.8 gigabyte mark for Xbox One. So let's move into the patch and go over what has changed, what has been fixed and what has been added. First of all in terms of main additions and changes. First of all for general main additions, they've added a cutscene to the game that unlocks the new Tundra region in the Gaiden Lands. This is the sixth region made available in the Gaiden Lands. This ice themed area will include monsters that would normally only be found in ice regions such as Baryoth, Viper Toby Kodachi and so on. This will also allow us to get new materials that can be used to increase our maximum augmentation level even further. Anyway, this patch has also added new weapon trees, armor and skills but they haven't actually stated what they are at the time of this video. They've also added the returning monster, the Stygian Zenoga. This monster will appear in a cutscene in the Gaiden Lands after finishing the story of Monster Hunter World Iceborne and will be accessed via a special assignment. And then finally in terms of general main additions they've added a tempered version of Ruin and Nergigante to the game. Of course you'll get materials for augmentations from this monster as well as a new pendant for your hunter. Anyway, next in terms of main additions and changes to various actions that the hunter can perform with their moves and such. First of all, they removed the damage reaction from the startup of the claw uppercut for the sword and shield. Also, regarding the same move, this move can now also soften monsters' hides, so it gives sword and shield players an easy way to tenderize monster body parts. Next, and another change for the sword and shield is that they've adjusted the damage of the perfect rush combo. So hopefully this will make this combo more rewarding by increasing the actual damage. This is a great change in my opinion as the perfect rush was one of the more entertaining moves to pull off with the sword and shield, at least for me. Anyway, they've then went on to say that they've adjusted their design on how other players are knocked back from the explosions caused by the gun lance's worm stake blast. Hopefully this has eliminated it altogether or reduced it at least. They've also made various adjustments to the dual blade actions but they haven't specified what these are. Although one of them, for Iceborne only, instead of dropping slinger ammo after performing the dual blade spinning rising slash, it will now wound monster parts. So just like the sword and shield's claw uppercut, hopefully this gives the dual blade an option to tenderize monster body parts a little bit easier. Next with the heavy bowgun they fixed an issue where cluster bomb reload speed was normal or reload wouldn't perform whilst aiming when using the weapon. They've also adjusted the design of the hunting horns extended health recovery so health could be regained even when taking damage over time. I actually didn't know this was an issue but then again I am not a hunting horn main. They also adjusted how much ammo is used by the flint shot when the slinger capacity skill was active. This is going to be interesting because I use the slinger capacity skill normally as a byproduct on some of my builds so it's going to be interesting to see how much ammo is actually used up when we perform the flint shot now but I'm sure depending on what slinger ammunition we are using the amount will differ. Anyway, they've also adjusted the frost craft skill so that the insect glaive will no longer consume its gauge when performing a moving mounted attack. So that's about it for the action changes to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. As you can see this was all to do with weapon balances, changes and fixes. And it's interesting to see that they're still making a few adjustments to some of the weapons out there as well as addressing bug fixes. But anyway, let's move on to the next major additions section which are changes to the system. First of all for Iceborne only, new decor has been placed in your room in Celiana. Also new background music can be played in your room as well. They've added various new designs for the squad cards. They've also added new pendants. They've also added starter friendly defender weapons to the various weapon trees which can be forged at the smithy. They've also added starter friendly defender alpha armor sets that can be purchased from the armory. You don't have to actually forge it this time. They've also added a new feature to upgrade the armor to its maximum level automatically so long as you have available armor spheres so you don't have to manually upgrade the weapon one level at a time. So just a little quality of life change there. Also when obtaining analyzed special tracks in the Gaiden Lands or when you've finished analyzing special tracks, other players in the expedition will now obtain the same special tracks. So it allows multiple players to gain more laws overall. Also sticking with the Gaiden Lands, the leader of the Gaiden Lands expedition can now decrease the specific region levels manually by speaking to the handler 
and also they have added a ton more new layered armors for players to craft. And finally, for new additions to the system, they've added new weapon poses to allow your hunter to pose differently depending on what weapon you have equipped. This is great for view mode and for if you like to show off your weapon. Now, it should be noted that some of these changes with the system are going to be related to new additions that are purchasable, so microtransactions in the various stores. So keep that in mind. But anyway, let's move on to the next section, which are miscellaneous main additions and changes. First of all, there's a region level fix option available whilst you're actually in the Guidance Land, so you don't always have to return to Pseliana or Estera to change this. They've also changed the design, so all ammo types are reloaded when exiting your tent with a bowgun. This is a great little change, as I've been using the bowgun more and more lately, and it's always annoying when you change to it and you come out of your tent and all the ammo needs to be reloaded. It just saves a little bit of time that they're automatically reloaded when you exit your tent. Next with the insect lathe, the red, white and orange kinsect extracts can now be harvested from the wagon in the training area. Also the shining wyvern blade has been renamed to the platinum dawn. This name was changed to match its appearance. Next they've lowered the frequency of the palico's voice playback whilst in standby mode. And finally the following decorations have been now made easier to obtain. The blaze jewels, the stream jewels, frost jewels, bolt jewels, dragon jewels, venom jewels, paralyzer jewels, sleep jewels, and blast jewels. Basically, all the jewels that are associated with the level 4 slot decorations for elements and ailments. So, a great change there. And hopefully, it means that we don't always have to rely on the various element or ailment charms anymore. But anyway, let's move away from major additions and changes to talk about bug fixes and balance adjustments. First of all, with bases and facilities. First of all, they fixed an issue with the priority level of certain mills added to the canteen in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. They also fixed an issue that wouldn't allow you to create Rajang items obtained from the Gaiden lands at the Elder Melder. They also fixed an issue where the music player in your room in Celiana wouldn't appear at all. They also addressed an issue where the game would freeze when displaying certain dual blades in the equipment display in your room in Celiana. They also fixed an issue where placing your pets via the housekeeper specific steps would cause errors. They've adjusted the conditions to unlock the background music the invading tyrant Basil Juice for the music player. And finally, they fixed an issue where after eating a meal at the canteen, the time before your stamina is reduced isn't reset. So you'd still have that reduced stamina pool. So those are all the little changes and adjustments to the bases and facilities in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Let's move on to quickly talk about bug fixes and balance adjustments to the various monsters in the game. First of all, they fixed an issue where Brachadios would get stuck on the top of the ledges in the special arena. They also fixed an issue where during multiplayer, the explosions caused by tempered Brachadios slime would not be synchronized between players. They also fixed an issue where certain monsters would always be displayed during a low rank quest in the ancient forest even if they did not appear in the quest itself. They also tweaked the rewards upon breaking Zenoga's head along with adding rewards. They also fixed an issue where Legiana would continue to walk instead of fly after the avalanche is triggered in area 4 of the Hoarfrost Reach. To be honest it's quite hard to get Legiana down there, normally using the challenger mantle is the best way but this has now been adjusted should you want to get the flying ice wyvern down there. They also fixed an issue where Nightshade Paolumu wouldn't drop a shiny after a turf war with certain monsters. They also fixed an issue where Velcana wouldn't sustain damage in its turf war with Ruin no Gigante. To be honest, this is probably not a common bug as the only real way to get Velcana to turf war with Ruin no Gigante is to have them both appear in the Guiding Lands. Anyway, they fixed an issue where stamina wouldn't decrease while mounted on top of Gold Raffian. They also fixed an issue where Master Rank Lunostra wouldn't use its flare attack. Lunostra I already found difficult enough, so fixing this issue is probably going to make it worse. They also fixed an issue where Gold Raffian would take more time than usual to land after attacking with its Hellfire Breath. Also next they addressed an issue in the Coral Highlands, where Namiel would sometimes fall into an area it isn't designated to go. They also fixed an issue where certain attacks from monsters would hit twice. They didn't specify what monsters or attacks these were. They also fixed an issue where the Clutch Claw would work during certain monster actions even when it shouldn't. I'm hoping this doesn't apply to sleeping enraged monsters. They also fixed an issue where the colour of Steven Basil Juice scales wouldn't correspond to its powered up state. The next fix was to an issue where Namiel's water pores wouldn't react to the monster's electric attacks. They also fixed another issue with Gold Raffian where the monster would roar non-stop if a player led it to a specific area of the Elder's Recess. 
They also fixed an issue with patch version 11.50, where analysed special tracks could be obtained while mining from Uragan or Radaban's back in the Guiding Lands. Capcom apologised for not notifying players of this change earlier. And finally, they've adjusted how long the Elder Dragons and certain monsters stay in the same area of the Guiding Lands. This is probably applying to the higher tier monsters in the game. So there we have it, those are all the changes and bug fixes to the various monsters in the game. As you can see there is quite a fair bit of them, but I can understand some monsters need a little bit more ironing out than others. But anyway, let's move on to the next section which is quite a big section which is all about player bug fixes and balance adjustments. First of all they fixed an issue with the Longsword's Foresight Slash or EI Slash or the Evasion Mantle would successfully trigger an evade when the monster is knocked down even if no attack hitbox was present. This is actually quite a big change. I've noticed sometimes when certain monsters fall over, they can trigger the Foresight Slash, allowing you to go into that Spirit Round Slash and power up your weapon quite quickly. So it seems that this was unintended and this now addresses that issue. So potentially nerfing some damage potential for the Longsword and players who use the Evasion Mantle. Anyway, next they fixed an issue where Lunostra's info in the Guiding Lands menu wouldn't appear under certain conditions. Next they addressed an issue where if you don't have the Surveyor Kit, so the camera, and under certain conditions you talk to the Linian Researcher, the first tutorial for the survey set wouldn't appear and you wouldn't be able to obtain the item at all. They also fixed an issue where in the Coral Highlands monsters would get caught in environmental traps instead of being knocked down as a result of colliding with a wall from the Clutch Claw's flinch shot. Next they addressed an issue where the health boost skill increase wouldn't be displayed properly to other players during multiplayer. Next they fixed an issue where only the effect sound plays in certain situations after the heavy bowgun auto loads its ammunition. They also addressed an issue where icon colours were not displayed correctly when upgrading your weapon. They also addressed an issue where the upgrade state of equipment wouldn't be reflected when updating an equipment loadout. They also fixed an issue where in specific situations, slinger ammo would get embedded into the wall or other environmental structures when performing a clutch claw weapon attack on a monster. They also fixed an issue where the master gatherer skill wouldn't activate when mining with the pickaxe. I do want to apologise at this point in the video as a lot of these bug changes are very minor, I don't have too much of an opinion on them and it's hard for me to add any additional information. But anyway, let's continue. Next they fixed an issue where the auto shoutouts would display unintentionally after using the clutch claw to slam a monster into a wall. They also fixed an issue where the attack and control guide would not match after a backwards evade with the sword and shield. They also fixed an issue where the skills related to the draw attacks would be consumed if the draw attack came into contact with Velkana's frost. They also fixed an issue where the flint shot would occur when grappled onto a monster even though no button was pressed. Never really experienced this and I believe there was an issue with this in the previous patch so it seems that maybe it's not completely fixed yet. Hopefully this addresses any further issues. They've also fixed an issue where the critical hit effect would appear when wounding a monster's hide after hitting it with the sword and shield's claw uppercut. They also made adjustments to the dual blades spinning rising slash along with increasing some elemental scaling. Hopefully this means that it's been buffed. They also fixed an issue where players would be inflicted with an elemental blight even when guarding certain monster attacks. So that's going to be good news for shield users out there. They also fixed an issue where the position of certain weapons while sheathed was inaccurate. Next they fixed an issue while searching under specific criteria the second page of SOS flares couldn't be viewed. They also fixed an issue where the effects for the charge blades powered axe mode would continue to be displayed even when the axe wasn't powered up. Also they fixed an issue where player character behaviour would become erratic if the player becomes zombified whilst in mid-air close to a ledge. This is actually quite an interesting one, would be interesting to see. Never actually experienced it but anyway. They also fixed an issue where some skin colour on the player's characters would not display properly when the zombification status was removed. They also fixed an issue where the default colour of the Gastodon layered armour was unnatural. They also addressed an issue where the correct defence numbers were not being shown when the defence related skills are active when forging or changing equipment. Next and for PlayStation 4 only they fixed an issue where when holding down triangle button to continue to reload whilst aiming the heavy bowgun the reload would not continue after reloading cluster bombs. 
and the same applies for Xbox but instead of holding triangle it applies to holding the Y button. They also addressed an issue where Palico commands would change place in the item window after switching Palico gadgets. To be honest I've never really noticed this bug as I always use the radio menu for my Palico gadgets. And finally for player bug fixes they fixed an issue where the hunter would not perform an action when a button is pressed after the player uses the left stick and a buffer input is recognised. So as you can see a lot of player bug fixes and adjustments made there. Nothing too groundbreaking but this should all make for a smoother Iceborne experience. But anyway let's move on to the final sections which are bug changes and balance adjustments to various miscellaneous aspects of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. First of all they fixed an issue where the directional button camera controls wouldn't respond at times when using the item control settings type 3 or 4. Next they fixed an issue where the select ammo coatings entry in the long range weapon control guide would not display when using the item control settings type 2. Next they fixed an issue where multiple actions would be performed at the same time when the player uses the surveyor kit so the camera and the functionality of L1 R1 or LB and RB is switched in the control settings. They also fixed an issues where characters could fall off the map in the Coral Highlands. I think I actually have seen a clip of this, it's quite amusing when this happens but it's a bug that's been addressed. Next they fixed an issue where the analysis gauge would disappear when the player obtained analysis in progress special tracks or analysed special tracks. They also fixed an issue where the molies would continue to dig into the ground even if they had already ran off. I've experienced this quite a bit when making the various Moly videos. They also fixed an issue where activation conditions for skills that raise elemental power wouldn't display properly when inspecting other players equipment. And they have also addressed an issue where monsters informations wouldn't sync properly between players when the monster is near death. They also fixed erroneous information in the A Man Shield 5 and the Boa Boa's Challenge 6 treasure tips. They also fixed an issue where multiple monster background musics would frequently switch and play during quests. I've noticed the background music on a few hunts has been a little bit sketchy of late so hopefully this addresses that issue. They also fixed an issue where the order of the item pouch would unintentionally change upon closing the application. They've also addressed an issue where ranking information couldn't be retrieved if a deleted player was registered within the rankings. They've also updated an error message that would display when save data is damaged and they fixed an issue where portions of save data would be erased under certain conditions for players who have cleared their payon of guidance and to the guided a payon's quest. Basically this was a bug that could erase certain portions of your save file like for example it could erase all your zeni or your research points so on and so forth. This has now been addressed and should be completely fixed. I was going to make a separate video on this issue but I have never personally experienced it at least as far as I'm aware and as you see with this patch video the issue should be now fixed. And finally Capcom have added last minute changes and minor bug fixes but they haven't listed or stated what these are. So there you have it those are all the bug changes, fixes, balance adjustments and more that come with patch version 12.01. Now with the patch information documents, Capcom sometimes word the documents a little bit strangely but I hope this has given you an overview of what has been introduced with this new update. As always there will be more dedicated videos going over the new Stygian Zenoga special assignment quest and that coming up on the channel so don't forget to check it out. But what are your thoughts on this patch? Leave a comment down below and until next time I've been Darkblade bringing you a patch information video for patch version 12.01 for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.